This is All India Radio. In the program Samvad, now we bring you an interview with Dr. Sheila Gorbole, Coordinator WHO, Solidarity Trial and Scientist, ICMR on Drugs for COVID-19 and Available Options. Interviewer is AIR Special Correspondent Mattu J.P. Singh. Central government in collaboration with states and union territories government has adopted the strategy of aggressive testing, tracking and treatment to deal with COVID-19 pandemic. Effective containment strategies and clinical management protocols have improved recovery rate and reduced fatality rate. As we deal with corona pandemic, there are several issues we face as far as treatment options are concerned. Dr. Sheila, what role has ICMR played in guiding the medical fraternity for treating COVID-19? So, the very first sentence you mentioned was in the testing. So, I think the testing strategy, which has been revised over time based on updated evidence, is one of the basic guidelines for the medical fraternity. But apart from that, the role of ICMR is research for public evidence and public health. And so, this is our forty. And therefore, we've had a lot of clinical trials which were done to identify treatment, which was a WHO solidarity trial, as well as trials for convalescent plasma therapy. So, this is one very important role that ICMR has played in helping the medical fraternity find the right treatment for COVID-19. As you are the national coordinator for WHO solidarity trial, what has been the benefit of sharing data across various global clinical trials and the collaboration, which has brought on this new and faster approach to drawing conclusions in clinical research. So I think for this global pandemic, we had to have a global collaboration. That was the bottom line. In order to find the right answer for treatment, we need well-designed, randomized clinical trials. But these have to be carried out very rapidly to show that the drugs that are being used are not only safe, but also useful. And this is where the collaboration and sharing of data across countries was very useful. The WHO Solidarity Trial is a very good example of this. Right now, there are over 29 countries which are currently randomizing into the trial and more than 30 odd countries which are wanting to take part in this trial. In addition, there are investigators of randomized control trials from different countries who do speak to each other to see what is happening, whether some safety issues are being identified, whether any efficacy data have already come out. So based on this kind of a collaborative effort, not only within a single trial, but across multiple trials, we can find large numbers of patients which will help us get quick answers. We can also test multiple drugs simultaneously. And we also have a very variable population. If you could tell us more about the approach which was followed in these trials. WHO and a group of experts developed a protocol. They looked at the various options. Experts were consulted and then various drugs were reviewed for their activity and their potential use in COVID. And then a decision was made about the drugs that could be used for the trial. Obviously, they needed to work on the donations of drugs for doing the trial. Then all the different countries were approached. When India was also approached and India agreed to be part of this trial, then we identified a single national coordinator and the ICMR National AIDS Research Institute coordinated the trial across India. We ensured that all the regulatory processes were followed, all the approvals were obtained and we did all this simultaneously so that we could initiate the first patient on the trial within less than a month after we actually accepted that we would do the trial. We identified sites. The sites and the PIs were very interested. Everybody was committed. And the ethics committees in the clinical trial sites also reviewed and of the protocol gave suggestions for informed consent and we could begin trial. This was done during the lockdown period. All the trainings and all activities were done online through webinars, through emails, and uh, we managed to ensure that we now have 26 different clinical sites in the trial in India and more than 200 sites across the world who are actively enrolled. If we talk about drugs, is the information regarding drugs not effective equally important as effective ones? Yes, very much so. Because 
when we do a trial and we find that a drug is not effective or futile, it tells us which drugs we should not use. And then there is a, we save on using drugs which are not required to be used or which won't make any difference to the patient. So it's very important to know what is not effective. Coming to repurposed drugs, what are repurposed drugs and their importance in this pandemic? Essentially, repurposed drugs are drugs that were originally developed to treat other infections or disease conditions, which are now being tried against this new SARS-CoV-2 virus. Now, developing new drugs is an ending problem. And in such a global emergency with the large burden of infections in a short time and high mortality, fastest way to find a new treatment is look in our back of our cupboard, so to speak, and find drugs which we have already tested for safety, which are possibly being used in other diseases, but which will act in such a way that they'll be effective on the new virus. So we already know the safety profile of the drug. We can quickly test them in the lab on the virus in in vitro studies to see if they kill the virus or prevent infection. So they either work on the viral factors or the host factors. And then they can very quickly be tried in large trials. So let's take the case of SARS, COVID-2 or COVID. In the current case, many of the drugs that we are now trying or which even physicians use individually were drugs that were tried. Some efficacy was shown against the SARS virus or the MERS virus, so which led people to believe that it could work against COVID. So repurposing allows to rapidly study treatment where a cost is less and the risk of failure in terms of safety is also less. So all we have to see is does it really make a difference? So in our trial, for example, all the antivirals that we used were essentially repurposed, except that one of them that was remdesivir was not used for any kind of a disease because it had been found to be ineffective for Ebola virus. I was just about to ask you about the efficacy of remdesivir in treating this virus, and that too on the doctor's prescription. Can you elaborate more on this remdesivir? One of the important proteins that required by the SARS-CoV-2 virus or the virus that causes COVID is the RDRP protein, which is a very important and critical protein. Now, Remdesivir was a drug that was initially developed to treat Ebola and was found to act on this because it was acting on this particular inhibitor of RDRP. It was decided that it should be tried in COVID also. Now, some studies, some of them, conducted by the company and some by others, and one of which was a randomized controlled trial, showed that remdesivir reduced the stay in hospital and helped the patient recover faster. So based on this evidence, first USA allowed this drug to be used under what is called an emergency authorization. That is because of the pandemic situation and the benefit that was shown, it could be used only during the pandemic in the emergency. In our trial, we are testing remdesivir to see its impact on mortality. And we still don't have enough data on that, and that is why our trial continues. Hopefully, we will soon have an answer for that. Now, remdesivir has also been approved by Indian DCGI for treatment in patients who have moderate disease and are in hospital. It is a five-day treatment. It has to be given by IV fluid. And on the first day, we give 200 milligrams and then 100 milligrams every day. This drug is also manufactured under license and has been approved to be manufactured by many companies in India. In fact, these Indian generic manufacturers are going to make a big difference to the world because they are also allowed to provide this to many other countries. So this drug, which is one of the two drugs that is so far being approved and for treatment of COVID is manufactured to a large extent in India and is available only on a doctor's prescription and in specific cases as an investigational therapy as per the clinical management guidelines of the government of India. And this brings us to a next question. Are there any newer drugs to look forward to which are under clinical trial at present? So there are drugs like um, tocilizumab which inhibits the immune response that causes 
the acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is so much a part of COVID-19. There are drugs like famotidine that will soon be tried. There are inhibitors of the immune pathway, as I said, like the JK or the Yamis kinase inhibitors or the BTK inhibitors, which are being tried or will soon be tried in various clinical trials. Paripiravir is another drug which is also being tried in some clinical trials. If we talk about dexamethasone, what are the benefits of dexamethasone in patients on ventilator? Dexamethasone was one of the first drugs to actually be shown in a trial to impact or help prevent death in certain kinds of COVID patients. There is currently a very large trial going on in the United Kingdom called the Recovery Trial. In this trial, they tested the effect of this dexamethasone, which is ubiquitously available and very low cost. It's a steroid, long acting, in hospitalized patients. So they had large numbers, like over 2,000 patients on dexamethasone and more than two times this number of patients on standard of care or what they call usual care. In mechanical ventilation, use of dexamethasone reduced death by a third. And if patient was on oxygen, it reduced death about one in five times. But what was even more important for us to realize is that the death among patients who were not on ventilation or did not require oxygen, there was no difference or a marginally worse outcome. Therefore, it's important for the public to realize that dexamethasone or any other steroid should only be given when the patient requires oxygen or invasive mechanical ventilation. We have been seeing mm-hmm. that in some cases with plasma therapy, the conditions of patients have improved. So what is plasma therapy and how helpful is plasma therapy in COVID-19 and what are its success chances? Plasma therapy in India is recommended as an off-label use. What it does it mean? It means that we give the plasma of patients who has recovered from COVID and has developed enough antibodies. So this takes some weeks and it is very important that the plasma which is given to the patient who is suffering right now has to have adequate immunity in their plasma so that they can transfer this to the patient. But it's very important also to just like we give blood transfusion to check that the patient is compatible. Blood group compatibility has to be checked and cross-matching of the blood also has to be done. This is extremely important. It's generally recommended in moderate disease by the Indian guidelines. ICMR actually started a phase two open label randomized control study. So what happens in such kind of a pandemic is that people are pushed to trying new treatments based on evidence from smaller observational studies. So therefore, ICMR actually started a trial, which was an open-label randomized control trial, where patients would be randomly allocated to receive plasma therapy or not receive it. And you asked me about how efficacious it is. That you will soon know when the trial will be complete and the days are out. In conclusion, what is India's learning in terms of COVID medicine? I think the biggest learning with a new disease is that it's an ever-evolving field. We learn more and more about the disease pathogenesis as well as how to handle the disease. So, for example, we learn that uh, probably in India we have a large requirement for using anticoagulants to prevent the cardiac and other morbidities which are associated with the immune response to COVID. We also learn that at this point of time, dexamethasone is useful, remdesivir is being used, this is through the trial, and high-dose hydroxychloroquine does not have benefit in advanced or severe disease. And we learn also that our clinical guidelines have to change rapidly based on the new evidence, and it's important for us to be able to document and publish our experiences with the different COVID medicine, so that not only Indian physicians, but the world can learn from that. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. You were listening to an interview with Dr. Sheila Gorbole, Coordinator WHO, Solidarity Trial and Scientist, ICMR on Drugs for COVID-19 and Available Options. The interviewer was AIR Special Correspondent Mattu J.P. Singh. 
This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio.